Hi, welcome back to CVN305. We were talking about failure criteria and last class we looked at what is meant by failure criteria and how this is done. The problem with our approach for last class was the fact that we had to do quite a bit of work in order to do the calculations. Okay, So we had to do like equilibrium, this, that and the other and we had to do it for every cross section if you remember. right? So we want to be able to do a shortcut. The trick for the shortcut is the following. Suppose, see, this is where our uh, detailed knowledge about how this thing works helps us. So our shortcut is based on our formula, which is 7.5. Let me write it down so that we know which formula we are talking about. Let's see. It's based on our formula 7.5, 7.6, which tells us that if I know sigma xx, sigma xy, sigma yy on two perpendicular planes. then I can find normal stress and shear stress on any plane tilted at an angle theta by using 7.5 it says sigma equals sigma xx plus sigma yy over 2 plus sigma xx minus sigma yy over 2 cos 2 theta plus sigma xy sin 2 theta. This is normal stress at any angle. Tau equals sigma yy minus sigma xx over 2 sin 2 theta plus sigma xy cos 2 theta. So these are functions of theta. And you can very easily find out where is maximum by finding out max of tau as a function of theta. So, you know how to do that by calculus for example. Uh, so, for this is for uh, ductile materials. Maximum sigma for brittle materials. Okay, so for ductile materials we do maximum of tau. For brittle materials we do maximum sigma. So, just to get you an idea, so I have implemented these two formulas on an Excel spreadsheet. So, if you go here on this Excel spreadsheet, you can see the values of sigma xx, sigma yy and sigma xy. So, I have given sigma xx is 4, that means if I look at this, this is 4, sigma yy is minus 10, so that is 10, so that is compression 10, sigma xy is 0. And I have computed normal and shear stress for every angle. Can you see that? All these things are out here. All the angles. So this is what 0 degrees, 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 4 degree, like that. And if I plot it, you can see I'll get a I'll get a graph like this. So this is actually normal stress. This is actually shear stress. So it's easy for you to say, okay, if I were looking at a Tresca criterion, I would say, oh, the shear stress is about, that's the maximum shear stress and it occurs at an angle of about 105 or 108 degrees. The other one, the maximum normal stress is here, that's about 4 and it occurs at 0 degrees. Notice it repeats. Can you see that? 
but that's the angle 100 and 110 or 150 degrees something like that does that make sense to you so i can plot it and find out okay and i can say okay if this is more than critical value and if it's a ductile material that's going to fail if this is more than a critical value and it's a brittle material that kind of fail okay so these are fairly simple things right but you don't want to actually do this plot this again and again and draw okay this is just for us to illustrate it turns out we can do calculus and find out and when you do that you will find that sigma tau max sorry will be square root of sigma xx minus sigma yy over 2 whole square plus sigma xy whole square that's all you have to do it's pretty simple right you won't know the angle but you can find out very easily what's the maximum value so you won't know which plane is going to fail by just looking at this but you will know whether it is going to fail similarly if you want to find out um, the maximum normal stress you can do the same thing let me show you what i mean so that's the maximum shear stress sigma max or min equals sigma xx plus sigma yy over 2 plus uh, tau max that's easy right so find tau max first and then do this for example in our case sigma xx was 4 sigma yy was minus 10 sigma xy was 0 so tau max is square root of 14 over 2 square which is square root of 7 and you can see from the graph that's sorry um, what happened here so square root of 7 squared which turns out to be 7 right so tau max is 7 what about sigma max equals sigma xx plus sigma yy so it's plus or minus so we'll have to do both signs so let us see sigma max will be um, 4 minus 10 divided by 2 plus 7 sigma min will be 4 minus 10 divided by 2 minus 7 this will turn out to be 7 uh, sorry uh, 4 minus 10 3 and a half plus 7 10 and a half right and sigma min is uh, 4 minus 10 so this will be oh, yeah, yeah. I'm doing wrong things here sigma min sigma max equal to 4 minus 10 divided by 2 plus 7 which turns out to be 4 minus 10 is minus 6 so 7 minus so this is 4 and this one is 4 minus 10 divided by 2 minus 7 which turns out to be minus 10 so sigma max is 4 sigma min is minus 10 okay so there is some surface on which the normal stress reaches 4 some surface on which shear stress i mean shear stress reaches 7 so on so you can easily find out okay so what happens is instead of having to do lots of tables this that and the other you can do a simple calculation and find out what is the maximum stress what is the minimum stress all of this works beautifully for what is called plane stress so let me tell you what is meant by plane stress Remember, we talked about stresses on three surfaces. You remember that? We talked about x, y, z. So, this is the y direction, this is the x direction, this is the z direction. And the real state of stress looks like this. Sigma xx, sigma xy, sigma xz, sigma yx, sigma yy, 
sigma yz, sigma zx, sigma zy, sigma zz and this is equal to that, this is equal to that, this is equal to that because of balance of angular momentum. We talked about this very briefly. Taking moments, we could find it out. Okay. If one of the planes has no stress on it or no force on it, it is in a state of plane stress. So the condition is that one of the planes should have no force on it. So it could be the x plane, it could be the y plane or it could be the z plane. But one of the planes should have no stress on it, then it will be called a state of plane stress. For plane stress, for example, if the z plane has no force, then this will be 0, that will be 0. Because of symmetry, this will be 0, that will be 0, that will be 0. Can you see? Only this corner will matter. Right? That is plane stress. Okay? And it does not have to be the z plane. It could be the x plane, it could be the y plane, but some plane on which there are no forces. Okay? That is called plane stress. Now, once you have plane stress, then our calculations work for plane stress. We have Tresca criterion says tau max equals square root of sigma xx minus sigma yy over 2 squared plus sigma xy squared. This must be less than tau critical. This is for ductile. The maximum normal stress criterion says sigma max which is equal to square root of which is equal to sigma xx plus sigma yy over 2 plus or minus tau max. The magnitude of this must be less than sigma critical. So, this is for ductile, this is for brittle. So, what happens if it is not a state of plane stress? For general case, that is full stress matrix so if i have full stress matrix i have to do the following steps step 1 find eigen values of sigma matrix. These are called the principal stresses. You cannot do this typically by hand, you have to use a computer, maple, matlab, whatever you like. So, you have to find the eigenvalues. Step 2, tau max, so sigma max equal to maximum I can value. Must be less than sigma critical. This is for brittle material. For a ductile material, tau max equals one half absolute value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 or sigma 2 minus sigma 3 or sigma 3 minus sigma 1 one of the differences must be half of that must be less than tau critical. 
So eigen values are what matters when you do three dimensional scale. There is one case where things are little bit simpler. What if my stress state looks like this 4, 3, 3, 9, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0. So what does it look like? So here is my stress Q. Draw me these numbers. So I am going to draw it. So this is 4, that is 3, that is 3, that is 9, that is 2. Notice no shear stress in Z direction. If there is no shear stress in the z direction, then things are a little bit easier. What we do is we find sigma 1 equals square root of sigma xx plus sigma yy, sorry, minus sigma yy over 2 squared plus sigma xy squared, like before. Sigma 2 equals, sorry, um, plus sigma xx plus sigma y y over 2. Sigma 2 equals this thing minus that thing, sorry. Minus of this plus that, that sigma 2 and then sigma 3 equals sigma z. So now your criteria becomes tau max equals one half absolute value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 or sigma 1 minus sigma 3 or sigma 3 minus sigma 1. Any one of these things, sorry, one half, one half must be less than tau critical, which as I said before is sigma yield divided by 2. This is for stress star criterion. For the na maximum normal stress criterion, you have to say sigma 1 or and sorry and sigma 2 and sigma 3 must be less than sigma max or sigma critical. This is for brittle. This is for ductile. This is what you have to do.